Um, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you're all uh, caffeinated and uh, full of water and liquid and ready to start the, the workshop. We are delighted to have um, Sally Brazier back with us. Sally came over a month ago and gave a fantastic workshop at our creative industry session in the model. And Sally's expertise is very much working both with creatives and with industry. So she knows both sides of the coin uh, and how best to make those relationships work. So she's going to take you through um, some, some tips and tricks in that area and take you through a workshop. And what we hope is the things that you learn from Sally today will very much help you either if you're thinking about a challenge um, that you already have and how you might phrase that and how you might get the best out of that or if you're looking for some inspiration um, to sort of dream up a challenge that you think will be suitable for the company. So I'll introduce you now to Sally. Thank you. Um, good morning everybody. It's lovely to see such great businesses here. Um, after I've told you a bit about myself, I'm going to talk to you a bit about the sort of results you can get from doing a project of this kind. I'm going to take you through uh, the creative problem solving process so that might be something helpful to you in your business whether or not you take up the challenge and, and then talk about the sort of things that you could put in in your challenge so um, my background is that um, I work as a business advisor business consultant um, I have a specialism in managing design I help businesses to understand how they use design in their businesses um, because I have both a business and a design background so in a, my company is called Siestra. Um, not my, my best naming process, but not bad, um, because it's CEO, because we work with managing directors and management teams at Stra because it's about strategy. So most of my work is actually helping businesses such as yours, ones that want to grow, to actually develop strategy. And then as part of that, I get involved in their marketing and design strategy. I feel very strongly that it's important that you're clear about where you're going with your business and that strategy, and that whatever you do, either in this challenge or elsewhere, that actually that relates to what you need to achieve for your business. So I have a very strong belief in that. And I think uh, that where I get involved is before um, a design project happens, before uh, clients move on to doing other parts of uh, strategy development, because it's the preparation work that really matters to make a, a project successful. And I work um, on the client side during a project and after the project to make sure that that works well in the company. I've been doing this for 15 years, so I've been bringing uh, creative businesses, design businesses together with um, businesses that want to develop, and I've seen significant results uh, from doing so, and I think you have a fantastic opportunity here, and it will make a significant difference to your business. I was also involved uh, in a project for SMEs. I've been doing workshops uh, to help small to medium sized businesses understand how they use design, working with established businesses. And in 2004, we did projects with established businesses, but also startups. And uh, that's where we did speed dating. We did speed dating with designers for the very small businesses because it made it economic for them to work with a designer. What we found was that out of eight businesses that went on to do that, so that's 2004, we're now in 2012, I went and traced and had a look where they were. The vast majority of those businesses are still in existence and thriving, which is quite exceptional for startup businesses because the failure rate is much, much higher than that. Um, it's difficult to say whether those results are definitely working with a designer or whether that business was, was enlightened and different and therefore they did work with a designer, but it made a significant difference. Um, so this is typical of the sort of business that I would come across. Um, it's actually, um, it looks like an owl sanctuary if you ask me, which is what they asked me. Um, they had had a, a marketing company that had helped them put together the most revolting brochure. I actually find it so revolting that I have to cover it up because it makes me feel a little ill. I'll pass it around, but I would be really grateful because it's my only example of, it has this wonderful little man. I don't know whether you can see it. They wanted to keep that, but they said it wasn't working. Uh, and I, I came in and said, well, that's because you've got all these different messages all over what you're doing. You look like an owl sanctuary. They were actually what I would call a septic tank installer. Uh, they call treatment plants. Um, they'd come from agriculture, they'd originally been doing agriculture drainage, and they were doing the real top end, so they were using Clargester, which is a really top end uh, installation, but they didn't look like it. Um, uh, we looked at what they were doing, looked at their competitors, and found that um, what they were doing was 
the very smart thing. They always left gardens in a really good state. The only thing they couldn't do was put back the plants, but they didn't leave you a building site. Um, so we needed to really think, rethink how they did their business. And they went really through uh, several creative processes. One was the creative process that, that I took them through to really rethink their business, and we changed the way in which they acquired clients, and I'll show you about that. But also, we got a designer in to really help them with the identity, the way they communicated, and, and the identity in the whole sense, and I'll show you the different things there. So the change was that we, they said they wanted to keep the owl, which was okay, but we decided it was too owl sanctuary-ish, and we decided the owl should represent wiseness because they were very knowledgeable about what they did. They dropped the farm because they were no longer agriculture. We kept the hall because that was about uh, big buildings. They did large houses typically, and that was their target market. Um, and this was the identity that was created for them, still using the owl. Interestingly, in the long term, they said they would have dropped the owl, but at the time, they wanted to keep the little man, red man pointing, and I went, absolutely no chance. Uh, <laughs> and the designers, I think, came out with a brilliant one, which was excellent treatment, which has a sort of dual meaning about excellent customer services, which is what they could do, and the fact that it was about treatment plans. Um, what we did change, and this is where I say part of it was, was the... Uh, designer coming in, but also we really looked at how they gained business. And they were looking on lists of people who'd got permission to install a tank. Well, mostly people have already chosen their supplier at that point. Uh, what we realise is if somebody's off main drainage in a village, everybody else is off main drainage. So actually your target market is wherever your client is. So we developed a system where they had big banners and they went out and distributed in every uh, house and said, uh, has your neighbour made a wise choice? building on the sort of wise knowledgeable if we had to have an owl. And uh, if um, somebody referred somebody to somebody else, they also got a £100 voucher with Vivales, which is a, a nursery. So they got plants. So the only thing they couldn't do was put the back the plants. So they got £100 worth of plants if they referred somebody in. Um, that was the change in brochure. So it went from this grim thing. I'll have to pass this around. There we are. So you can have a look at how grim it was. What we realised looking at all the competitors was that Everybody else was using clean water. And actually, what people cared about was they didn't want to know they had a septic tank. They actually just wanted really nice gardens. So the designers focused on, on nice gardens and the sky. Um, and everything that they did was then branded. This projector must be very bright, you know. It's bleaching out this one as well as, um, as Caroline's. Um, so everything, Caroline's point about consistency. The thing is that if people are expecting a really good service, they take all the things that you do and the other things that you have as an analogy. So um, if your vans are clean and smart, they're consistent, they expect consistent service from you. If you're all over the place, you look a bit amateur, they'll expect uh, amateur service, which is what they used to have with their old brochure. Um, and uniforms, instead of having the red man because he stood out, which looked particularly silly, as you'll see in the brochure, it was very smart uniforms, uh, really got across that they were the top end of the market. And, you know, their treatment plants cost 10 grand to install, so uh, significant. Again, a bit bleached out, uh, then introduced a website at that time. Uh, we, the only thing we were stuck with was we didn't have time to take new photographs because we didn't have a summer to go through it. Uh, so we, but we focused very much on nice, uh, nice um, environments in the end, rather than in terms of uh, the actual septic tank itself. What was great was that they employed a graduate to do their marketing. And really, he picked up doing the direct mailing, picking up with distribution of leaflets and, and following. But he also monitored absolutely everything from the point that this new methodology and identity and communications literature and website were put in. And if you look here, sort of uh, January 2002, they had 135 uh, quotations that they did. By 2004, they doubled that to 280 uh, quotations. And what also happened was that originally they were getting nothing from direct mail and websites. Clargester is the, the multinational that supplies their equipment. Um, and they were getting those yellow pages. They were getting some referrals from. Complete change in the way in which they got their inquiries. Uh, direct mail expanded enormously. Websites expanded enormously. Actually, referrals comparatively went down from Clargester. Not that they reduced, but comparatively. And what they found was they thought, people thought they owned Clargester. And they started giving referrals back to Clargester, who are the big multinational. So it changed very much uh, the way in which they were getting inquiries. Okay, sorry, I stepped onto that one. 
so it showed very much that this had a very significant difference to their business and enormously increased their sales. Their original ambition was just to cover the East Anglia part of England and actually they're now national. So it really changed where they, they went in terms of their ability to grow. What I wanted to uh, talk to you about was um, the creative problem solving process. Now this methodology was developed by a guy called Mimbasta, who's Professor of Applied Creativity in Canada. And many of you will know creative problem solving processes. He just brought the whole thing together into some, a model that um, everybody could understand and use. And if you're going to go through a creative process, you really have to go through all of these stages to ensure it's most likely to be successful. So the first stage of this, you know, I've never used one of these laser printers and found a use for it. Uh, normally I'd draw it, but I thought it wasn't big enough for, for this environment. But the first stage is problem finding. And problem finding is where it's a fuzzy situation. So many of you are in a fuzzy situation at the moment. It, what challenge could I do? I'm looking for something that I can have as a challenge. This seems like a good opportunity. The next stage that you need to go through is fact finding. So fact finding would be, what do I know about all this? So you've come here to find some facts about it. Uh, what do I know about my industry? What do I know about my competitors? What don't I know? What do I need to know? And this gradually helps you to really understand the issue that you're facing, the problem that you're facing. Um, after that, you go on to define the problem that uh, you want solving. Um, the analogy in terms of uh, the design process or a creative process is that you have to really understand. Uh, Caroline talked about this uh, stage that Julie took her through, which is to really understand her business before they said, this is what we need to, to solve. And then the next stage is when you generate ideas. Um, after that, it's about taking those ideas uh, evaluating the ones that you've got and picking the ones that you want to go for with before planning what you're going to do, selling it to anybody else that you need to, maybe it's to this group here, to get your challenge, and then it's about doing. The issue um, in terms of uh, this methodology uh, that it, it brings out is that uh, this side uh, on the right-hand side is where you really expand everything out. The left-hand side is where you narrow things down and actually select. Um, what we find, uh, and Mimbasta did research, was that different people have different preferences for a quadrant. So some people up here are very comfortable with uncertainty, are willing to stay in that zone without making a contract and do the exploring sort of side. Other people are most comfortable when they're coming up with lots of ideas. Other groups of people are in the sort of three area. My colleague is very good. He can look at a situation. He's very good at picking out the right thing to, to go ahead with and putting it into action. Um, and then the last part is that people are doers. What we find is that an awful lot of uh, managing directors uh, that we work with tend to be predominantly fours, and they're either secondary or one, so they don't mind uncertainty, or they're people who, need, who are very good at picking out the right thing to go ahead. Rarely, and that will vary because obviously there are some creative businesses, uh, more creative people within businesses are people as much twos. So what happens in a business is they find a problem and then they, they come up with an answer and they rush off and do. And that's great because if you pick the right idea in the first one that you've come up with, then that's, that's good. But what happens is that we come across companies that have gone around that top end lots and lots of times without actually properly defining the problem, spending time generating enough ideas that they're going to come up with the best one, a proper evaluation process before they rush off and do. Um, what I would suggest to you is that bringing in creators into your business, they invariably are good at this part. And so they'll add something into what you do. And this process is shown over and over again. There's been lots of research. If you don't go through the full process, you're not likely to optimise coming up with the right solution to, to problems. So what I said was that the first stage is problem finding. In this fuzzy stage, you need to remain open-minded you're more likely to come up with other ideas that maybe are slightly better and it's important that you do the fact finding and I see this in a sense as your responsibility in terms of these challenges you need to be doing that process of really looking at what you need to be doing thinking it through in a sense what you'll do is go through that circle yourself before going through the circle with a creative and in the second quadrant where we move into defining the problem you'll probably be in that first edge of it maybe when you give us your, your challenge. 
And I thought, to, just to give you a thought about your challenge, a problem is the difference between things as perceived and things as desired. So what's the gap in your business of something that you could do? The reason I'm emphasizing these first 